Home Assistant's sixth release of 2025 is here, with 2025.6 arriving on June 4th. This month is once again all about a bunch of small quality of life improvements, including to pickers, Bluetooth networks, dashboards, and the sidebar, among others. There are also some deprecations that you'll want to know about. I'll walk through all the big updates so you know what to expect and how your smart home may benefit. Just remember that I'm testing the beta release, so it's possible that the final release may look a little bit different. If you're new here, my name is Michael Lean, and this channel is all about how tech can make you more productive, especially through home automation, with new videos every week. Perhaps my favorite update this release is improvements to this sidebar. In case you didn't know, you can customize the items that appear in the sidebar menu and the order in which they appear. Now, there is a clean dialog allowing you to drag and drop items or to hide items. Additionally, sidebar customization was previously specific to each device. If you used Home Assistant on the companion app on your phone and a desktop, you had to set the customization for each one separately. This was also necessary sometimes when switching between the internal and external URL for your Home Assistant server. Now, sidebar customization is stored in your user profile, so your changes are applied across all of your devices running Home Assistant. The drop-down menus that you use throughout Home Assistant to select entities, devices, areas, and more are called pickers. With this release, pickers are gaining improved search functionality and an updated UI treatment, including manufacturer logos for easier identification of what you're looking for. The Bluetooth integration now includes a graph or visualization reflecting how your Bluetooth devices are connected to your home assistant. This allows you to see if the device is directly connected or if it's connected through a Bluetooth proxy. Similarly, the Zigbee integration also got an update to its network graph for a consistent UI treatment. Back in the April release, we saw the introduction of a new experimental areas dashboard. With the June release, there are some subtle improvements based on user feedback. There is now an actions section that includes all of your scripts, automations, and scenes. Also, the number entities, button entities, counter and timer helpers have been moved to an others section. And the entertainment section was renamed to media players since those are the only entities shown. Typically, when I add a new device to Home Assistant, I change the device name and its entities to something that's more logical to me. But what if you want to go back to the way it was before? Now you can find a reset entity ID button, which will restore the entity ID to its original value. You can do this for a single entity or for all the entities associated with a particular device. Core and supervised installation methods are now deprecated. These are more advanced setups that require running Home Assistant in a Python environment, for example, and are used by a small percentage of the community. Home Assistant will now raise a repair issue after upgrading if your system is affected by these deprecations. Moving forward, only Home Assistant OS and Home Assistant Container will be supported. If you're unsure what you are using, you can go to Settings, About, and view your installation method. Additionally, support for legacy 32-bit CPU architecture is also being phased out. All of these deprecations will continue to receive support until the 2025.12 release, after which they will no longer receive updates. There are several new integrations this release, but one that I'll call attention to is one called Amazon Devices. This allows you to connect and control your Amazon devices like Echo and Fire TV. I'll be curious to see how this works compared with the custom the media player integration in Hacks. Also, several existing integrations received updates. One that I'll be taking advantage of is support for SwitchBot vacuums and the new SwitchBot Lock Ultra. I'll be dropping a video on the Lock Ultra Vision soon, which lets you unlock your door with just your face, so get subscribed so you don't miss it. Those are the major changes, but I'll leave a link to the release notes in the video description so you can check them all out. As always, review the list of new integrations and breaking changes to see what matters to you. Otherwise, that's what you can expect with the Home Assistant 2025.6 release in June. Let me know in the comments which features you're most excited about. While you're down there, give this video a like and consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.